Yeah, in Tucson, Arizona, or in southern Arizona in general, we are in a place where Africanized bees are very prevalent, and we have an environment where Africanized bees do very, very well and survive. Um, so it's something that we have to coexist with uh, as beekeepers uh, here in, in southern Arizona. Some beekeepers choose to work with Africanized bees and, and actually keep them in colonies, and other beekeepers try to bring in queens from outside of our area in order to have non-Africanized bees. Um, but if you're a beekeeper, at some point, a colony is going to be uh, overtaken uh, by an Africanized supersedure swarm or a new queen that your colony produces is going to go and mate with Africanized drones. So as a beekeeper in southern Arizona, at some point or another, uh, you're going to be interacting with Africanized bees. And so that's um, uh, just part of being a beekeeper here. And so you, it's good to know about Africanized bees and how they differ from uh, from domesticated lines of, of honeybee that, um, that you can purchase. And yeah. Uh, Africanized bees are defensive in nature, meaning they uh, will more aggressively defend their colonies than a typical honeybee colony would. Uh, they will dedicate much more of their workforce to attacking anyone that they perceive as an invader. Um, and they uh, tend to be set off by much smaller stimuli in terms of going into an, a defensive uh, behavior. Uh, so, so Africanized bees can be dangerous to the general public. If you've got a feral colony living on your property, um, you may get you know, be watering plants in your backyard and get chased around by bees or get, you know, your dog might get stung by bees or something like that. So, um, so Africanized bees are a problem because they can, they can create dangerous situations for, uh, general people. Um, in Southern Arizona, it's not uncommon for at least one person to be killed by a bee attack on almost a yearly basis. Um, uh, basically aside from dogs, honeybees are the most deadly animal in the state of Arizona. Um, and that's through Africanized bee attacks primarily that that occurs. Uh, so, so bees are a hazard for that reason. Uh, bees can also be a hazard because when they live inside of unwanted cavities inside of properties and structures, they create honeycomb um, and that uh, has to be removed uh, or can create damage. So basically uh, bees can be an infestation that can cause property damage and can also be a dangerous animal that can, can injure people and, and make spaces unsafe to work in or use. Um, there's in fact uh, rock climbing, uh, some famous rock climbing routes in Southern Arizona that um, uh, were essentially abandoned for several years because a feral beehive was living in a crevice at the base of the rock wall where the rock climbs happened and essentially be uh, climbers uh, put out warnings essentially just saying don't climb here there are bees here and you're going to get attacked so so uh things like that can happen where essentially if a, a feral hive that's aggressive takes up residence in a in some place it can it can make that area uh hard to, to access or utilize without getting messed with by bees So Africanized bees, I feel like when they arrived in Arizona about 20 years ago, they were all pretty universally very, very aggressive. But we've now had Africanized bees in southern Arizona for 20 years, and they have co crossbreeded and co-mingled with the bees that were already here. And in a lot of ways, we have unwittingly selected against the more aggressive colonies, because if you're a feral colony of bees living under a shed and you're very defensive, you're likely to get the exterminator called on you, where if you're a nice gentle colony of bees, you might the homeowner might not even realize you're there and you might be able to live and do your thing for a while. So in larger cities like Tucson, um, I feel like we have kind of unwittingly selected against the most aggressive of the Africanized behaviors. Um, but yeah, at this point, because of the intermingling and the fact that uh, Africanized bees have been here for 20 years, they, their defensiveness exists on, on a pretty broad spectrum. And you'll find some Africanized bees that will behave almost like domesticated bees in terms of their aggression level. You can go in and, and work the hives without gloves on. You could keep a hive in your backyard and for the most part not have problems. Um, you will get other Africanized bees where literally the moment you pop the lid off of the hive, you will be covered in bees trying to sting you through your suit. And so you, you will get a broad spectrum from absolutely bees that will try to murder you the second you bother them to bees that really behave almost like domesticated bees in their, in their level of aggression. Um, the other thing that can happen with Africanized bees and bees in general is their aggression can 
uh, vary throughout the year depending on environmental context. So uh, if there's a dearth, if there's not a lot of stuff blooming, um, bees will be a lot more defensive because they are not, all the foragers are not out foraging and bringing resources back. They're rather staying home and defending what the hive already has. Um, so you might find that you have an Africanized hive that has been uh, very gentle and then suddenly the midsummer or the fall comes around and a dearth hits and those bees suddenly become much more defensive than they previously were and it's because of what's happening in the environment. Bad weather can make bees uh, have bad attitudes uh, as well so there are there are contexts so a colony an individual colony can vary in its defensive behavior depending on the time of the year and what's going on in the world around it and then also uh, Africanized bees vary heavily between uh, colonies in terms of their level of aggression and Yeah, so when I started, I was a very small beekeeper and I acquired most of my bees uh, for my growth through uh, bee removal. So I used to capture swarms and do cutouts and a lot of that. And so predominantly all of the bees that I was getting were Africanized. They were coming from feral colonies throughout Southern Arizona. And so for the first many years that I had a bee business, I was predominantly an Africanized beekeeper because most of my bees were coming in from outside. And, and I, rather than spending the money to requeen them, I just managed them as Africanized hives. Um, once I got up to about 150 colonies, I started realizing that I was taking one step back, one step forward by rescuing bees because I would go out to someone's house, cut a hive out of their floor, bring it to my apiary, but I would miss a day of working my own bees and I would lose a swarm from one of my own hives because I wasn't there to work them. So if I'm gaining one hive by doing a cutout, but losing another hive because I wasn't managing my own bees, I'm not really gaining ground. So when I hit about 150 colonies, I stopped focusing on bee removals and started focusing primarily on managing my own bees and making splits of my own hives and providing those splits with purchased queens. So I used to, you know, when I started and was growing, kept predominantly Africanized bees. And then once I switched over, uh, once I switched over uh, to managing and not doing as much removal, uh, my genetics started to change because all of my bees that I was getting were coming through splits provided with mated queens rather than feral cutouts. Um, so I have very much went from someone who kept predominantly Africanized bees to someone who really tries actively to avoid keeping Afri uh, Africanized bees. I do still uh, capture some swarms and do some cutouts for a few clients. So I do have about 15 to 20 Africanized colonies that get brought into my operation on a yearly basis. And I do let them exist as Africanized colonies until I'm able to get a read on their attitude. If they're a mean colony, I will requeen them, but I have some colonies that I've just left the queen because she has a, a you know, an acceptable disposition in my opinion. So, um, and I will say that I do not miss managing Africanized bees now that I manage primarily bred queens of, of, of selected stock. Um, Africanized bees are mean, they're very swarmy, uh, they're hard to manage on, at scale. You have to, it takes extra work and you have to be really on top of things to, uh, to keep on top of Africanized bees where the, you, um, you know, the selected varieties tend to be a little nicer on you. Like for example, uh, in the past when I kept primarily Africanized bees, when the honey flow was over, immediately all my hives would start preparing to swarm. As soon as they sensed a dearth coming on, all the Africanized hives were immediately like, okay, it's swarm time. And so I would want to pull honey off of my hives and split them, uh, but I was in a big race to split those, to pull honey and split hives before they swarmed. And I would never win the race. I would always have hives swarming before I could pull uh, honey from them. And once a hive swarms, I've lost the opportunity to split it basically, right? And now that I keep predominantly your, uh, you know, uh, bread colonies of bees, um, I find that I have a much br longer window in which I'm able to pull my honey and make my splits before those bees go swarming off on me. So it's, it's a lot more, and I'm also now able to work, w you know, without gloves on most of the time. So it's, it's much nicer to keep bees uh, that are not Africanized in my experience.